I'm so sick of sitting down. I only sit if it's really necessary. And I put down my chair. I sit like a if I sit down, you know, because my hands are so tight with the armrest because it's a gaming chair, you know. So when I present, it's always like, hey guys, what's up, my camera? Anyway, this week's video is all about me trying to tell you what you should keep a lookout for or some simple tips on buying your next computer. So what it is that you really need to consider or apa benda yang kau kena tahu bila kau nak beli PC ni? Memanglah beli PC senang kau pergi kat kedai, you go to a shop, you just say I have a 3000 ringgit budget, I have a 5000 ringgit budget, I have a 10000 ringgit budget, berapa juta lah duit orang and he will present to your computer, some spec, dia ketuk si kanan-kanan sikit and then you know what? You just go home with the computer. But that is I would say the least efficient way of doing things simply because you don't know what you're going to do with it. So I think first and foremost, what you need to actually do is identify what you're going to use your computer for. There are three types of processors in the Lamentum, like Intel, okay? There's i3, it's an i5, it's an i7. Now, an i3 simply is a very basic processor, which means if you just want to type, you know, if you just want to, um, if you just want to send emails, you want to keep a warrior, you know, you main game, Dota, CSGO, the basic games, then i3 is fine. So i3 is for the entry user. So if you're on a day-to-day basis, data entry, you use Microsoft Word a lot, you know, you use, um, lots of email and stuff, i3 would be the most suitable for you in terms of budget as well because it's not as expensive as an i5 or an i7. Now, an i5 on the other hand, it, to me, it's like the best of both worlds. Well, not really better than i7 obviously, but an i5 is simply more like a gaming processor. Uh, in, in layman's terms, like nothing so technical and stuff. i5 has four, four cores, like a quad core processor, but some i5 processors, as far as I know, does not have four cores, like say, um, there are a couple of variants of an i5. I'll probably leave some uh, links in the description below for you to check it out. Um, they come in only two cores, but then these are the processors that you want to stay away from. Generally, i5 are gaming processors because it has enough capacity to, to run games and stuff like that. Obviously, the famous gaming processor is the i5-6600K. Now, i5, if you're a gamer, you like to uh, edit pictures here and there a bit, you know, and you do daily stuff as well, i5 is the best processor for you. And now the creme de la creme of processors lah, which is the i7. Now the i7, in my opinion, is mahal na mampus. The LGA1151, which is the new Skylake, or it's not new lah, it's actually quite old already, since the KB Lake is out, but in Malaysia it's not out yet. Uh, it's about, it starts off about 1000 plus for the 6700. Now this computer is using a 6700K simply because an i7 is the most suitable for rendering because it has this thing called hyper threading. Now hyper threading is a simple, in a simpler term, I'm not gonna go so technical and everything, i7's hyper threading simply means that it's able to render things faster lah. You know, it's able to do things more faster, even though it's a quad core, but it has more threads. So threads mean uh, not cost lah. So I'm just gonna leave more information in the description below because I'm not gonna bore the shit out of you. But so you know the difference between i3, i5, i7. So i7 is 1,300 bucks and above. I think you can get used for different sockets, which is the not the 1151 for less than a thousand, maybe, I'm not too sure about that. But I'm using a 6700K, which retails about 1,400, but it's probably the most worth it. And of course you have the i7s which is the 6800 and above which runs on a different socket motherboard which is the X99 or the LGA2011. So you have three different ranges. You have the i3, the i5 and the i7. So the i3 I would say it's about maybe 300-400 bucks and then the i5 is about 600-700 bucks and the i7 is about whoo! It starts from a thousand plus and above. But bear in mind that the i5-6600K retails about, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's about a thousand plus. So it's nearly the price of an i7, which is why I usually tell people to, you know what, bite the bullet, go for the i7-6700, which you can also overclock on a Z170 motherboard. Alright, now once you've already sort of identified what sort of processor you want, you know, th that sort of sets your budget. But obviously before even you want to uh, buy a processor, you sort of know where your budget is. Um, once you sort of figure out what processor you want, that sort of gives you a bit of check and balance in terms of how much money you have left. Motherboard specifically, um, you know, there are tons of motherboards. They have H motherboard, la, A, la, all sorts of different alphabet. If you look at H110M, I think that's the most uh, famous uh, motherboard for the LGA115. 1151 which is the Skylake uh, socket so most people try to get that but I'm quite against getting a non-Z motherboard simply because you, if you know the S-Rock Pro 4 Z170 Pro 4 goes for about 460 ringgit and the high-end non-Z motherboard goes for about I think 300 plus so that's a difference between 70, 70 over ringgit difference and it's not really worth it in my opinion 
But then again, it's my opinion. Uh, a lot of people would say, "What apa kau beli ma uh, motherboard mahal mahal kalau kau pakai i5 6500 or i7 6700 nan k version because you're not going to overclock it." I don't see a reason why you shouldn't even overclock. I did an overclocking video before on the i5 6500, and there's at least what 30, 40 percent increment in terms of performance or even more. So you can check out that video. I'm going to put a little link right here so you can check it out. Um, and then um, the, if you look at i7-6700, even on a non-K processor, you can overclock it by just tweaking some stuff here and there. So get a Z motherboard because it's most, it's most worth it compared to any other motherboards out there. I would suggest you to get two hard disks. You should get an SSD or an M.2. M.2 is simply because it's besar lighter. I don't have a lighter right here. The besar lighter is just square, nice and small, but your motherboard needs to support an M.2 sort of disk. You know, I don't know, it's like a disk. Or a SSD. It's a, it's 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 an it's a form of hard disk, but it's just tiny as shit. And you have an SSD. So SSD or M.2 is fine, but use that as your boot disk. So SSD ranges from around maybe 100 to 150 ringgit, um, and you you can get it more expensive as well in terms of size. But if you're just gonna run Windows on it, you can just get 120 gig SSD, which retails about what 150, 160 use. This computer runs uh, on one M.2. It has one SSD, and it also has a couple of other hard disks as backup and support. So just in case anything, I can backup everything on the hard disk, and also have a couple of external hard disks that are not actually shown in this video. Now, RAMs are something that is so subjective. Um, in my opinion, I, I use an I use a used Avexir LED RAM, AGB times two, so it's 16 gigs. I have some red lights you know it's bling bling if that I don't think you can see the CPU it's right on the other side but um, RAM is uh, try to get if you're using a gaming computer you know I would suggest or even using a performance PC I would suggest you to get a uh, much more uh, higher performance RAM like higher frequencies because in terms of overclocking capabilities uh, RAMs with higher frequencies have higher overclocking capabilities than all this Kingston value RAM you know this little cheap one cool so you see all these chips on the solder marks on there so that's those are the value RAMs I would try to stay away from it unless you're on a really really tight budget because if I'm not mistaken a Corsair Vengeance on a DDR4 doesn't cost as much today compared to those days you can get a 8 GB kit or a 16 GB kit how much RAM do you actually need 8 gigs are much more than sufficient for gaming 16 gigs um, maybe you can uh, again I'm not a 16 gig fan even though I use 16 gig because I got it on a deal because most of the time if you look at your task manager by pressing Control alternate delete you can actually see the amount of RAM usage and I never hit hundred percent CPU always hundred percent when I'm rendering stuff lah. so but that's the two bases or the two differences between um, 16 gig and 8 gig. I don't see much difference, but there is a big difference when it comes to 4 gig or 8 gig. So 4 gig again maybe might suit your i3 usage. You know, if you use them for for emailing, if you use them for Facebooking, you know, all this keyboard warrior, all those little basic shenanigans, then maybe boleh. But when it comes to 8 gig, I'll say 8 gig is the sweet spot. And the next thing is your graphics card lah. This is the part where everyone is always in a dilemma. You know, um. I personally feel that the 10 series graphics card today are the most value for money and efficiency in terms of power as well. You can get a 1070 today for 1,900 ringgit on online sellers. So be sure to check out uh, all the online sellers. Even go on Lazada, get your coupons and stuff. You get a better deal. Even on Gem 5, you get better deals too. So check and compare prices. I don't think there are any graphics card that could run 4K yet smoothly. There's a 10, 1080, there's a Titan X, but even that, you can't run like maximum FPS. The most you get, what, like 60 FPS. And if you run a 144 hertz monitor, then I would suggest a 1070 would be the best bet. Even a 1060 wouldn't be that bad either. Or even a 1050 wouldn't be that bad as well. Again, from graphics card brings me to a point of monitors. Now monitors come in various forms, prices, sizes and stuff. Gaming monitors itself have different features like say this one right here has G-Sync, has 144Hz, it has like all this game mode blah 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 so obviously it's a gaming monitor provided that your computer is able to kick out that much graphics power via the display port. Now of course you have the Dell Studio series which I'm always a fan of because of its looks and that's the monitor that I used to use prior to this one which is the S2415H monitor and I really like it simply because it, the bezel is like super thin. Uh, I don't have the computer, the monitor right now with me, but it's basically exactly like this. But the only thing is it's 1080p, it's 60 hertz, it's an IPS panel. Even this one is an IPS panel. If you're a true hardcore gamer, obviously an IPS panel wouldn't, wouldn't be sufficient simply because it has a high response time. But again, you know, a four millisecond and one millisecond, unless you're an ESL player, does not make a big difference at all. So I would sacrifice that three millisecond for something that has better display and better color. Coolers are, are a bit more tricky when it comes to cooling. I, I'm not a fan of 
all-in-one water cooling solution simply because it's so freaking noisy. I, I like quiet, uh, quiet cooling solutions like air coolers and you have to be careful with air coolers as well because of the fan. fan some fans kick up much louder uh, fan, fan noises but you can get a Noctua one which is like what, 90 bucks for one, for one fan. I'm using a V6 GT simply because that thing is huge and it dissipates heat easily and it has dual fans. If I had the money, I would probably get an AIO but again, I'm very skeptical about AIO simply because I've read so much reviews online, I've even tested one that I had. It's cooling differences doesn't really differ much. I prefer something that is much more basic like, a, like an air cooling and it overclocks really, really well. So I, I, I don't see a point of getting an AIO just yet until I find the right one. Casings are something very subjective. I like bigger casing simply because of its non-restrictive uh, non-restrictive feature like the master box that I'm using right now. I like the master box simply because it's a very modular case. You can sort of put things here and there. But if you want a more compact case, I would suggest go for the Fantex. Fantex look really good. But if you're on a super duper ketat gila budget, you can go for a for a Techwear F3. If I'm not mistaken, it's one or the Techwear Alpha. You know, you have all all sort of casings that suits your budget. There are casings from 150 ringgit to like. I don't know, a thousand bucks, you know, and, and, and these really depend on the amount of money that you have in your pocket. And finally, the other stuff like, like uh, power supply unit, be sure to get good power supply units. Like I would say the Corsair CX650M is probably one of the best value for money uh, power supply unit compared to all the others simply because it's about 300 bucks and you get a semi-modular and it powers up my i7-6700K. If I overclock it to 4.4, I run a 1070 graphics card, you know, I it basically is more than sufficient because NVIDIA's graphics card today are much more greener compared to the 9 series or even the ATI R3 series, the R9 390, even the RX 480, you know. And of course, get a decent PSU because you might just fry your entire goddamn motherboard, man, if you get a shitty PSU. I like, the, I like this one right here, which is the uh, G900. It's really, really good simply because, simply because it's a... Uh, it's wireless. You don't you don't have you don't have any wires. You know, and much much neater. Mechanical keyboards are lovely. You can check out Wayne Chia's uh, YouTube channel. I'm gonna give it a quick shout out in the description below for you to check out his mechanical keyboards. All right, that's all I have for this week, guys. Do not forget to hit the button subscribe if you like this video. If you want me to sit in my next video, if you hate me moving around, if you hit this little shadow behind here. Let me know in the comment section below. Drop me your email if you don't want to comment right down in the comment box below at mindgamebestgiller at gmail.com and I'll be more than happy to reply you. You know, my rigs is coming up next week because I'm I have bogged up stuff to do and it's Christmas holidays anyway, so I want to go for a little break. I hope you like this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.